Hi folks, this is Dragon. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Warren, a uh, long time friend of mine for over 20 years, who uh, has kindly given us um, permission to look at uh, an urban bunker here in Australia. So um, thanks very much Warren and I'll hand it over to you um, if you could tell us um, a little bit about the specifications on this um, and then uh, perhaps we can go down and have a look inside. Yeah, thanks mate. Um, it's a concrete water tank, it's a prefab that you can order from the factory, uh, 5,000 gallon capacity. Internal is about 2.9 metres from floor to ceiling uh, and diameter is about 3.5 metres and it tapers slightly as you come up, up the walls. Uh, the lid, there were three lids that I could have chosen from a light, medium and heavy duty. And heavy duty I think was 12 inches thick, this one's 6 inches thick. The whole tank weighs about about 14 ton, and it displaces about 25 ton uh, in capacity, or 25 cubic meters in capacity. So that's why we're sitting on these bricks here. I was a bit concerned that it would float if we had a heavy rain, which we did, and it popped out of the ground about 200 millimeters. Um, if you have a look at the top of the tank, I've had them mount uh, some deformed bar at various points and it's around the perimeter of the tank as well. The reason for this was that uh, the plan was to put a, a shed on top uh, with another six inch slab for the shed which would aid in the weight of holding the tank down. Uh, and you can see the lip that we put in for the entrance hatch is six inches from the top of the tank so the, the concrete slab will come all the way up to the top lip more or less. What else can I tell you? I, I think it's it's either 20 or 40 megapascal concrete, so it's meant to be completely waterproof. To add to this, I also painted uh, a bitumous paint around the outside of it, and on the inside painted with uh, a concrete sealer. Probably not necessary, but I thought it's it's once it's in, it's in. You can't really change anything, so I'll do, try and do it right from the start. Um, the hatch itself is made from checker plate aluminium, six millimeter. And I made it from that instead of steel because it was more corrosive resistant. And the lid is made from 3mm uh, propeller plate, they call it, which is like checker plate, only it's a single hatch instead of four or five hatch. Um, it's got a little lever that I made up for it, three locking points, and the two at the back that it's hinged on, a gas struts to hold it up, which has got a good, uh, good uh, bit of tension there to hold the lid open. What else? Oh, a bit of carpet and a bit of foam just for, for um, air insulation and heat insulation. That's good mate. Uh, the, the metal work on the top of this um, you did uh, pretty well much yourself. I remember we were talking about this about two years ago I think it was. Yeah. 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 I, I, uh, there's a guy in Toowoomba here that I get to cut the metal and fold it because I don't have any facility for that but I, I do the welding and figure out what size I need. It's a good bloke in it. Um, Alley Arc, if you're in Toowoomba. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll do some good work for you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And um, I remember we were discussing some time ago, I, I guess this is, this is still a work in process. Um, it's functional, obviously. Yeah. Um, we're talking about, I think at one stage there, uh, some sort of heavy hydraulic um, lifting gear for the lid in case you, you get any debris um, thrown on top of it um, that would be too hard for you to lift the lid. That's right. Uh, I guess that's still a work in process. Still a work in process, but what I've got in the centre of the tank here, uh, because I've also put a, what would you call it, like a mezzanine floor to sleep on. Yep. In the centre of the tank I've got a, a 50mm square, 3mm um, thick pole, yep. which can be taken away and used as part of the jacking system, so I won't need a huge jack, just maybe a 16 tonne truck jack underneath that and then lifting that up on the lid. Oh, good, yeah, good. So that reduces the amount of rubbish that's sitting down there not being oh, that's great, yeah. that's great and if, if I can just um, have a look the ventilation system is run by a 10 watt solar panel Let's see if I can get a shot of this here we go and as you showed me before the, um, the vent on the left hand side um, I did uh, Warren showed me the airflow coming out of that uh, folks it um, it's, it's quite good, yeah. uh, very good actually, very good ventilation. So, um, 
that's that's one of the things you've got to consider for any bunker of this type is uh, air ventilation. I might ask you also too, Warren. Um, as a question, um, the the primary purpose or, or design for this uh, bunker, urban bunker, is um, how do you foresee it being used if if the situation arises? Well, there's a few a few issues that I thought of. Firstly, if you have a look around, there's a lot of bush around. So, as a fire shelter, it's practical. Yep. Uh, secondly, you know you spend a lot of money on your house, but if a storm came through uh, and blew it down, it's a secondary place that you could stay for a few days or a few weeks if you needed to. Okay. Um, it's a good storage facility because it's cool down there, so you know if you want to stock up on wine um, and also provisions if yep. you need them. And a lot of the food that I store down there is food that I use in the house anyway. Okay. So uh, it gets rotated through on a regular basis. Um, and it's really just a short-term um, shelter for emergency use. Um, for for uh, severe weather events, um, yeah. do you perceive it, or, or do you think it could be used in in the um, uh, event of uh, say uh, urban violence or rioting as as sort of like a, a safe room, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? There was a movie made out of it. Oh, uh, panic room. Panic room. That's yes. Yeah. 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 You could use it for that. I mean, it's got a three millimeter steel lid on the the top and with the shed slab eventually poured on uh, it'd be a secure place to stay uh, and there are no ex external um, locking points on the hatch so you know somebody couldn't really lock in they could put some weight on it but again if you had a, a jack downstairs you could jack it open again yeah. all the locks are on the inside so it, it could be used as a safe haven um, because the other aspect of that is not just the physical security but if you could hide it in some way, you know, so that people didn't know something like this was here, then you'd be secure as well. I mean, if you had a, a place in your house that you could secure yourself without people knowing it was there, you'd be safe as well. Yeah, yeah, OK. That's that makes great. Sense. All right, mate, uh, if you don't mind, um, if we can um, go down and have a look inside. Sure. And, um, 